Good morning. I'm starting just a couple minutes early just in case YouTube decided to be vertical today and needed to be adjusted. <laughs> I appreciate you, uh, those early birds that are here. Thank you so much for joining in. And uh, a big welcome to all of you, wherever you are. Some of you I know are very far away. I appreciate that. And um, I have a lot to cover today. And uh, in my first live stream of the um, first live stream of the decade, so, uh, <laughs> so let's just jump right in it here. I think everybody's uh, yeah. and tell me. Let's do a quick sound check here. Can you hear me, okay, folks? Hey, Candy, sound okay? Sound check. One, two, three. Very good. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Okay, good. Audio is good. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, first of all, the usual shout out to, to the best moderators on YouTube. Okay, that's Candy, of course, and Denny and Kevin. Uh, thank you so much for your help, guys. Very appreciated. Also, of course, a shout out to those of you who uh, super chat. I really appreciate those of you who uh, chip in for the channel and using the super chat function that is available below the chat, below the comments, gives you a chance to, uh, to support the channel by throwing a few bucks at it. Uh, also, uh, to those of you who are drinking uh, and watching, uh, drinking today out of one of these cups, thank you so much. I noticed the cup sales have been going up. This is the, uh, the same logo you see right here. This was done by uh, Phil Griffiths, a fellow out of Great Britain, who sent me the logo one day and said, do you like it? You can use it. And a uh, very nice guy. He also uh, did the video that you see at the end of some of my um, videos, you'll see a, a video probably about three months back where, where uh, uh, the logo just sort of falls in the water. And uh, I'm going to put that back in because I like that video. And it's a, just a little short video at the end of my videos that, uh, that just has this logo in it. So I'll be putting that back in. That was done by Phil Griffiths out of Great Britain. Mr. Chips is his nickname. He's a very big, uh, uh, big computer guy. Um, and so uh, very, very nice of him to do that, uh, to create this logo and that short video. Also, the, uh, the uh, cichlids and coffee logo, the fish drinking the cup of coffee, that was also sent to me by somebody just as a gift. Just here, use it if you like it. And uh, just love, love when people do that kind of thing. Uh, so a shout out to all those great folks. And uh, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on in the, uh, in the YouTube universe here. By the way, did you see the... Uh, did you see the IFG uh, video where he was drinking out of one of these cups? IFG, check out one of his videos where he's drinking out of one of these cups. So uh, I think IFG is on the, ch on the uh, stream here. So uh, IFG endorsed. Uh, <laughs> and uh, of course MAGA, he said MAGA, make aquariums great again. Make aquariums great again. Let's get a hat and put make a <laughs> MAGA. <laughs> Make aquariums great again. All right, so um, so at any rate, uh, I've been cruising around uh, YouTube. I've come across some interesting videos. Of course, I was very pleased to see IFG drinking out of that coffee cup. And, um, you know, I, I saw a video by D. Darius. I don't know if you folks are familiar with D. Darius. He's, he's an a old-time YouTuber that, uh, uh, that I've been following for a very, very long time. He's going to come up later in today's live stream. But... Uh, he, he had some problems, I saw this in a video, and I think it was a recent post, with a 3D background, and it was, I think, identical or very close to the background I have back here. And uh, this is a 3D background from Universal Rocks. It's called a Rocky Thin. It's a very thin background. I picked it up uh, because I didn't want a background that would take away swim space from the fish. And uh, he was having a, a uh, like a mulm, sort of a fungal looking thing, but it wasn't fungus because his, um, his treatments for fungus did nothing, and uh, it was growing on certain fish in the tank, and it would go away after a water change, and then it would come right back. And he tried everything, and finally what got rid of it was, uh, was removing the 3D background, and that, that's his, his theory was that there were some, somehow the 3D background was um, releasing phosphates, and these, this, these high phosphate levels were, uh, were creating a problem in the tank. And so th this, of course, immediately 
alarmed me because I have this this background. Now I've never had a, a problem with that kind of a background um, in any of my tanks. So um, what I commented under the video was, did he try pulling the background back and doing a real good cleaning and vacuuming between the background and the back wall? Because it does, it does accumulate, um, it does accumulate detritus, it does accumulate, uh, you know, some of that mulm, some of that, uh, you know, that, that, that goopy, slimy stuff that you see sometimes on the inside of your, of your uh, filters or, or, you know, underneath some of your decor. Uh, it, it does grow there and, and accumulate there. So I, my, my question to him was, did he try really giving that a good clean out and then reattaching the, uh, the background? Because I'm not really sure if, if the background would release anything that would increase phosphates. Uh, if it does, I mean, it's certainly something uh, I may even contact Universal Rocks about because if it is an issue, we should be aware of it. Everything in my tank, all my decor in my tank, except for the plants, which as you know are from elite cichlids, but everything in my aquarium is from Universal Rocks, uh, except for the substrate and the plants, right? All the rock work, all this rock work you see here, and the background is from Universal Rocks. So if those things are releasing some type of a, of a of a uh, or releasing something that's increasing phosphates, uh, we definitely want to know about it. So um, I will probably just just ask Universal directly if they know anything about it, and and also I'll see if uh, if Darius will respond to the comment about whether he tried to clean between the background and the back of the tank. And uh, I know when I removed this background from the 135, when I was transferring it over to the 150, uh, there was a lot of gunk back there, and I was actually surprised at how much of uh, you know stuff had accumulated uh, now this one is a bit uh, attached a bit tighter to the back than it was in the 135 uh, but we'll see anyway so a d darius video i came across i also came across a video by uh, another one of my uh, favorite youtubers adam c and adam c was um, uh, apparently he he got rid of of some linies uh some you know some um, some cichlids, some linies from, from his big 300 gallon, and uh, you know, all hell broke loose. And uh, whenever you do that with cichlids, whenever you mess with the order of things, it, it's, uh, it's, gonna, it's, it's gonna cause a shuffle in the pecking order. And uh, he, was, he was pretty distressed because, the, and, it, and it surprised me because I don't think linies would be tank bosses, um, but you, you never know where they fit in, in the order. And so when he took out this group of linies, and um, and and all and, and all of a sudden the the his trout, I think his trout and one other fish just went you know, batshit crazy and, and just started beating everybody up. And he, he was certain that there were going to be some death, some 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 casualties or whatever. But uh, very interesting video. He ordered uh, some fish uh, from uh, Josh, some very nice uh, Malawi hawks from Cunningham Cichlids. He got them in put them in and it seemed to almost immediately, almost immediately start to calm things down. So um, it was, uh, it looks it looks like he got it under control. Uh, those of us who keep cichlids know that that, uh, that peace in a cichlid tank is, uh, can be very fleeting, can be <laughs> very temporary. So just a couple of the videos I've come across recently, uh, check them out if you, if you can. Uh, I, I thought they were, I thought they were cool. And, um, the uh, the two videos I released in the last week, I had one about Do You See It, which was about uh, the fish coloring up. Uh, some of you watched it, some of you commented on it and, and seemed to enjoy it. Uh, the um, that, that sand diver is like just crazy. I just love that sand diver, what's happening. And what I'm seeing going on with that Malawi gar, uh, I'm starting to see some blue in the sides and uh, and anyway, the, the patterns in his dorsal and tail, they've got me really, really excited. And uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling like a real dork. So, uh, <laughs> so at any, at any rate, uh, some of you saw that, you liked it. Also, I had um, uh, a tip on, I, I put out some tips on um, my ideas on how to scape a tank. Uh, you notice usually my, my, my tanks are scaped kind of heavy on one side, opened up. With, with some swim space usually, and some areas where fish can go in and out. I love watching fish go in and out of things, uh, like right there where the, uh, it looks like the, uh, the fire hap is chasing 
uh, chasing a fish there. So, uh, see, uh, giving them a little bit of a break in, in a line of sight so fish can take a break and hide if they need to. But uh, I like the contrast of rock and plant, you know, against each other. So you can see the different textures and colors. I like that a lot. So uh, that was discussed in that video and it got a very good response. I appreciate those of you who stopped by and watched it. So um, videos I have coming up, I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing. I've, I've got a few ideas that I've been percolating and uh, we'll see. I'm probably going to be talking a little bit about um, the uh, Malawi Hawk Hotel. The Malawi Hawk Hotel is uh, now in uh, is now in in full uh, <laughs> in full swing. The Malawi Hawk No Tell Motel. What I did is I took the Malawi Hawk out of the uh, the 100, and uh, it looks like the uh, Cichlid Shack has just made an appearance, and uh, and so uh, f f good timing there because that Malawi hawk was from the cichlid shack. A beautiful male Malawi hawk that was moved from the 100 and now he is in a 30 gallon with the female that was in this tank. So I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on them because they are in a little bit of a tight quarter situation. We'll see how they get along. We'll see if they actually breed. And uh, so uh, maybe I'll be putting out a video on uh, Malawi hawk hotel. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, the um, also I received a uh, message from YouTube that I have uh, maybe because of the number of of subscribers or because of the activity or participation uh, that's been going on. I apparently have unlocked memberships, and uh, I'm not really entirely familiar with what that means, but I think uh, it has something to do with with uh, you folks being able to uh, become members to receive like private content, behind the scenes looks, things of this nature. I'm gonna look into it. I'm gonna, uh, I'm supposed to provide YouTube with a video that describes what membership to my channel would mean and then create different levels of membership where you would get different kinds of emojis if you were uh, at these different levels. We'll see, we'll see if I run with that. Apparently YouTube is now making that available to me, which uh, I think it's nice. It could be a, a nice uh, sort of a side a little side gig and uh, that we could go with. So um, just a few things that have happened recently. And also if, if I look a little bit uh, a little bit tired today, I was up, uh, up very late and I was up very early this morning. I'm kind of pumped up, I'm kind of excited um, for a variety of reasons. One of them is that my kids, I have four kids, uh, some of you know that I have four children, and uh, they got together and um, apparently without any help from mom, they just got together and uh, provided me with, with something to help me in my YouTube adventure. And they, they, uh, they, they got me this. For those of you uh, that are familiar with, uh, this is right out of the box, still in the plastic. For those of you that are familiar with the gaming world, uh, uh, this thing is a beast. It's uh, the 2019 Asus Predator uh, laptop. Now, why, why, would I, why would I want a gaming laptop? I'm not a gamer, I don't game, but gaming, but gaming computers have the best video cards. They have the best, uh, uh, you know, they really have the, the, the most beefed up uh, memory. Because of what they have to handle, they have a tremendous amount of speed and capacity. So I'm gonna be uh, going to a better camera. Instead of using my phone for live streaming, I'm gonna have a camera that is uh, tied into that, uh, that, that Asus Predator 300. And uh, so what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a better live streaming experience where I'm gonna be able to pull in uh, other video content. I'm gonna be able to invite other YouTubers to participate in the live streams and actually do split screens and have discussions with them and all kinds of fun stuff. So um, the future, uh, the, the, the new decade is looking good, so. <laughs> So let's just jump, uh, let's jump into the uh, topic of today's video. You know, about four years ago, I, uh, I released a coffee break time. Hold on. By the way, the, uh, the code live stream is still good. If you go to the Teespring link underneath any one of my videos and acquire any merchandise, not just a coffee cup, but anything, you can use the live stream code and you'll get 10% uh, at checkout. So um, a 10% discount. So 
Four years ago, I released a, a video. I was, I was very young and new to YouTube, and it's probably the video that really got me hooked on being a YouTube provider or YouTube uh, creator and uh, because of the response it got. And it was a, a video that just gave 10 tips, my 10 tips based on my sort of limited journey in, in keeping cichlids. These were my, 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 10, my 10 tips. And uh, it, 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 it went sort of viral. I mean, viral for this, for this corner of YouTube, uh, certainly not uh, you know, a million, a million views, but 388,000 is a pretty good, it's, that's a pretty good view, that's a pretty good view, and if all my videos did that, um, anyway, I'd be, I'd be uh, sitting pretty. So, um, so I want to revisit those 10 tips and see how they've stood up and, and see how they play today. And um, the, the first tip that was, that was uh, brought up in that video was, uh, uh, watch, I, I, I gave the recommendation that you should watch a lot of YouTube videos and, uh, and always be willing to, to learn. And, uh, and I went and I, and I meant, and I, and I mentioned several of the YouTubers that I was watching back then. And, uh, some of those YouTubers are still going strong today. Some of them are, go are gone. Some of them you don't hear much about. Uh, looking back on that tip, I think if I was doing that video today, I would say that you should only watch uh, Ben Ochar on YouTube. <laughs> and you know I'm just messing with you. <laughs> that that tip is still is still true today. I still recommend uh, I do it. I certainly recommend that that everyone do it. Uh, get a lot of information. Do a lot of research. Um, there's a lot of data out there uh, provided by a lot of. Uh, a lot of good uh, YouTube providers. There's also some uh, trash out there. Uh, there's also, you know, like information that's actually false or wrong or, or so this is why it's good to get, um, get input from numerous sources and, and then uh, be able to, uh, uh, be able to, to then make up your mind about what you want to go with. Uh, back then, you know, I mentioned uh, folks that, that uh, uh, if I was doing the video today, who would I mention? I would certainly bring up Corey at the Aquarium Co-op uh, certainly, Evan Alexander, IFG, uh, who has certainly diversified a lot since then. Back then, he was uh, very much into cichlids, and then predators, uh, predator haps, and then now he's into a little bit of everything. Uh, KG Tropicals, I, I watched hundreds of hours of KG Tropicals, and then before he went on his long uh, leave of absence, before he even came back, and uh, when Lisa wasn't really involved in the channel at all, and um, Steve Poland. Uh, Adam C., uh, certainly Joey, the king of DIY, uh, Rachel O'Leary, certainly legit, uh, D. Darius, who I mentioned earlier, Inventory King, I like watching his stuff, uh, so, a couple who are fairly new on the scene but have really exploded, I mean, Zenzo Tozawa, Tozawa's Tanks, uh, Ohio, uh, you know, the folks over at the Ohio Fish Rescue, uh, those folks, I, and, and uh, you know, these are those are all real legit. Uh, they're, they're legit. They they they, they want to help in the community. It seems like for the most part they want to help, and uh, and they, they uh, and those are probably the ones I would have included, you know, as of right now. And uh, maybe I know I've missed a few of them. If I have, who who's your favorite? Uh, who do you like watching? Put it in the comments. I'd I'd love to hear who you your who are your go tos. Who are your two or three go to YouTubers? Uh, that you like to watch, that you have notifications on, so you get, uh, you know, your the, the the bell goes off when you when they post. I like to hear. I like to find out because, uh, you know, I know there's some other good ones out there. I mean, uh, Jay Wilson, you know, Jay Wilson, he he got me into Sun Sun canisters. Uh, he did a, a review. Um, you know, he did a, a little a little rant, a little rant on. Um, on uh, Fluval and how he was having trouble with quality with getting an answer about something and so he got a Sun Sun and he really loved it and and he's sort of the, the, the way that I ended up getting into Sun Sun to begin with. So um, so tip number one, watch a lot of YouTubers and tip number two was um, over filtrate and uh, this was because uh, you know we were back then I was exclusively uh, working with very high waste production fish, African cichlids, which I still am today, and uh, and I was very much into overstocking. Which uh, today I think the 100 you you would call not so much overstocking, but 
but heavily stocking. The 100 is, is certainly heavily stocked. The 60 I would consider lightly stocked. Uh, this tank by most standards would be considered moderately stocked. Uh, so, uh, but back then I was really banging the drum for uh, really heavily stocking your tanks to spread aggression. Uh, since then I've, I've, I've sort of gotten a little bit softer on that, but uh, I was recommending a 10 time multiple. In other words, if you have a 100 gallon aquarium, get a 1000 gallon rating on, your, on the amount of filtration that you're using. So that, uh, because that rating of course is gonna come down once you put filter media in your filters. But I was recommending a 10 time multiple. And uh, I think that that, I think that, that uh, tip still holds today. I think that uh, when you consider what, what filters do when you, when you stuff them with media, I think you know five to 10, if you fall somewhere in that sweet spot between five and 10 times water turnover per hour, I think you're gonna be in good shape. And um, so that was tip number two was over filtrate and that fed into tip number three was overstock your tank uh, so no one fish gets singled out. That was tip number three. And um, today, I, you know, you look at things like bio load, you look at um, the amount of maintenance that overstocking is gonna create, the amount of filtration that's gonna be required. Um, a heavily stocked tank does require a lot of work uh, or you, you can very easily get a, a, a nitrate uh, or even an ammonia spike if something goes off. Uh, so I'm not so much into heavily stocking or overstocking as much as I used to be. Uh, but I, um, I would say, you know, stock sensibly and, and be more aware of tank mates and, and be alert to changes in the temperament or, uh, you know, within the tank. Like the recent episode that I had with the, uh, the eye biter trying to make a, uh, a move for the top spot, taking the top spot and then having the venusis right here. Uh, kind of wake up and then give him a beating. So uh, that was being watched very closely by me. And uh, anyone who is uh, who has cichlids knows what I'm talking about. So um, I wouldn't necessarily uh, tell you that you must overstock or heavily stock your tanks these days. I wouldn't say that. I would say stock sensibly, stock to your taste, and be sure that your, fil let your filtration is in par, in sync with your, your, with your bio load. Um, point number four, act fast when you see a fish getting beaten up. Uh, I, I believe that I built right before I recorded that, uh, uh, that video, I had lost a, a beautiful albino. I saw him getting picked on before I went to work. I didn't pay much attention to it. I came back at the end of the day and he was dead. So, um, so I, I sort of paid the price on that one. And, it, uh, and so I came up with this idea, one of the tips, that you need to move quickly. You can't, you, you can't really lay back and, 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 and just let it slide because, uh, because what can happen is you'll end up losing a fish. Now, that being said, I was like a, a referee you know, in, in an MMA uh, contest watching the eye biter and the venusas go at it. I was, you know, on the side watching and, and uh, watching them lock up, watching them do their thing and, and, and circle each other and the eye biter coming down from the top, the venusas going in straight and hitting them on the side. I was watching their, what they were doing very closely and a couple points during the, the battle, I stuck my hand in the tank and actually said, all right, back to your corners. Uh, no eye gouging, no, uh, <laughs> and so, and so the, uh, uh, in that case, letting it run its course so that uh, a winner was established and then that settled things down. And, and it did, it actually settled things down. So, uh, but back then, I mean, the action, the proper action back then would have been to remove that, um, that albino and, and put him in a hospital tank or rehome him because he was just singled out and was getting destroyed. Um, point number five, always add four or more fish so the new kid on the block doesn't get singled out and beaten up. Add four to six fish always. Now, 
that one really hasn't hasn't really played out that well over time and I'll tell you why uh, there are times when when you need to add one fish when when you've been looking for a fish for a long time and uh, and you find you find that fish and now you want you, you know, you've put him through quarantine and now you want to add him to the to the main tank and you're not going to go buy three or four other random fish just so you can add a bunch at once. So that tip has not really sort of stood up the uh, test of time. And what I've come up with instead is that when you're adding a single fish, uh, consider doing a, a, a rescape, you know, like move things around a bit, uh, turn off the lights, and, uh, and, and add that fish, you know, with the lights off and leave the lights off after you've done a rescape and then when the lights come on uh, hopefully the fish will just kind of look around and and go where am I and uh, look at all the fish and go okay well I guess maybe you've always been here so <laughs> so we're I'm trying to to sort of do a little Jedi mind trick on these fish by rescaping and making them think they've uh, they've gone through some portal to a new universe and uh, and uh, so uh, no you don't need to always add four to six fish at one time it was certainly a good idea when I was first stocking my tank and I was buying fish in in bunches like that and you know quarantine and then adding them in big groups and it certainly made uh, it certainly spread out uh, the aggression that cichlids often do with a new addition and uh, if you can do it I think it's a good idea because it does spread things out. It doesn't allow the new kid on the block to get beat up, but it's not always practical. And so you have to come up with a different method. In my case, turning everything off, doing a little bit of a rescape, adding the fish in the dark, releasing them in the dark, and then letting things stay dark for a little while. And, uh, and by the way, if you have comments or tips that, that about each of these tips, comment go ahead and and put them in the chat i'd love to read them uh you know i i might even come up with a uh with a 10 tips uh you know volume two uh, uh, video that includes some of your input uh you know i steal content from you all the time you know that right? <laughs> and i never pay you a royalty <laughs> hey let's be honest come on um let's see number six save money on the canister and invest the savings in high quality media buy two canisters two inexpensive canisters for the price of one and that way you'll have redundancy and backup and use the difference to buy high quality media like like uh, marine pure uh, bio home matrix or something like that so um, that was uh, the tip back then I think that that tip still holds today I you know I'm I'm happy with the very expensive Fluval FX6 that I have. I think it's a workhorse. It's very quiet. Uh, I will say that I'm changing another one of the valves on the top because it's the second valve started leaking now. Uh, my advice to anybody that has a Fluval is that if you change the top, uh, the water stop valves on the top of the unit, if you change one, change them both. Don't, don't, don't change just one. Go ahead and swap them both out because chances are that they uh, are both at the end of their, uh, of their life. So uh, I am changing out the second one now. So when you add in the cost in, in replacement parts, uh, I've never had to really replace a part except an impeller that I broke on a Sun Sun. Otherwise they've run very quietly and very strong for me over the years. So um, am I saying Sun Sun is better than Fluval? No, I'm not. Fluval is better built it's better materials, it's more heavy duty. <clears throat> you don't get the feeling that if you dropped it while it was full, it would break. Uh, you do get that feeling with the Sun Sun, uh, maybe not so much the 704B, but certainly the, uh, the 302s, you know, they're a thinner plastic. I haven't had a problem with my Sun Suns. The, um, so I think that that tip, buy less expensive canisters, invest it. You know, you know how I would change that tip today? I would say buy less expensive uh, canisters and, and use inexpensive media. And, and, uh, and don't get me wrong, I love BioHome, I love Marine Pure. That, that's what I have in my 60, and my 60 is my most stable tank. Uh, 
But, you know, you could use scrubbies, right? You could use, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that's inexpensive and that provides, that provides uh, area for, um, for beneficial bacteria to grow. And when you take into consideration that all of your substrate, all of your decor, everything else is growing beneficial bacteria, uh, I, I talked about this in the video previously, do you really need 10,000 square miles of surface area for your beneficial bacteria? Do you need that? Or are we, are we being silly? Are we being, um, uh, you know, are we being marketed to and, and buying into an idea that, so I don't know. I mean, this tank behind me has a mix of expensive and inexpensive. My 100 has very inexpensive uh, media in, in the uh, Fluval FX6. Uh, and the, uh, the most expensive media I have are in the, the Sun Sun 302s because those were put together right around the time when I released the 10 tips. So um, what do you think? Buy, buy the best media? Buy the Matrix, buy a home, uh, buy the Marine Pure, or go with the Scrubbies. You know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? I'd love, love to hear it in the comments. I really would. Um, tip number seven was skip one day of feeding with larger fish. Not the small fish because they have a higher metabolism. They're growing quick. They're burning up, uh, you know, they're burning up the energy. They're burning up the food very quickly. Uh, so not with the smaller, not with the fry, your smaller uh, grow out tank fish, but your big monsters that have slowed down a bit in their growth. Uh, I, I was saying to skip a day of feeding. Um, I'll say that I've gone in and out of doing that uh, currently for the last month or so. I have been doing it usually on water change days. Uh, I, I will not feed the fish. I'll let them go ahead and clean out their gut. I'll go ahead and include some vegetables in there, uh, like a veggie wafer or a, uh, a spirulina food like a Zumed, just something to clean out the gut of the uh, cichlids. And I can say, you know, knock on wood, that I haven't had any, uh, uh, you know, any bloat issues. I haven't had any bloat issues with my fish and uh, with one day of gut clean out. I also don't overfeed and, uh, you know, I watch, you know, I, my if I feed, if I err in the in the in the feeding, I feed, I I probably feed just a little bit less than than most. Uh, tip number eight: forty to fifty percent water change, change uh, forty to fifty percent weekly water changes with a long hose system. Get off the bucket patrol so you don't skip a water change to avoid the buckets. Um, I think that tip is still strong. I think that tip is still true today. I will say that uh, in many cases, to avoid the stressing of the fish, I have gone to more of a 25% uh, water change. And uh, I did that because when I went to 25%, I, um, I actually noticed less, less uh, flashing and by that, what I mean is the fish were not scraping so much against the substrate and the decor when I, when I went to less percentage of a water change. And what I suspected was happening is I wasn't um, shocking them with a, a shift in pH, which even a slight shift can be uh, a little bit of a shock for these guys. And uh, so the, the flashing after a water change stopped when I went more into the direction of 25%. Now, that being said, I, off, I, I from time to time, will do a 50 to 70% water change, uh, depending on what my readings are, and depending on, let's say I'm gonna be catching a fish. Do you folks remember a, a week or two ago, I put away, I put out a, a video on catching fish. And, uh, and what, what I did was uh, you put, you know, you put the screen in the middle, you drop the water level way down to like 20% and it makes it very easy to catch fish. So um, there's no choice except an 80% water change when you do that. So, so from time to time I do it and I did notice after that water change that there was some scraping against the substrate, you know, the fish will scrape against the substrate or sometimes they'll do that little shimmy, you know, where they kind of, like they're trying to shake something off. Um, 
so there is that activity. So I think they do get a little bit of a, a little bit of distress. But then again, remember, you distress your fish. Whenever you do anything with them, you're going to provide, you're going to distress them to some degree. Uh, that that you move the core around, you add fish, you take out fish, you you vacuum. The, these things are create stress for your fish, and that's that that sort of comes with the game. Um, I made that comment about bucket patrol uh, because I myself was experiencing lower back pain and uh, on Mondays after spending several hours working on my tanks on a Sunday, on Monday I would go to work and my lower back was aching and, uh, and there were times when I, I, I was going to go do a water change and there was a part of me that would think maybe I should skip it, maybe I should, you know, Maybe it can go another another week, and the reason for that was because my back was hurting, and so um, uh, Denny, if you're on the chat, uh, you know De Denny Riddell, one of the moderators. I mean, he had he's got a beautiful 220 gallon setup, and I think another large setup where he's got some shellies, and uh, uh, he went through back surgery, and so imagine being on bucket patrol and 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 recovering from back surgery it's not going to happen you're going to have to have people come over and help you and and things of this nature so uh the python uh 50 foot hose system for me was a complete game changer and um i had an i have an aquion system too and just my opinion i i think the python is a better a better system it uses a softer uh rubber or plastic in the hose makes it easier to work with doesn't kink as much and uh Anyway, so uh, definitely, if you don't have a, uh, a hose system, definitely get one. Uh, tip number nine, research on YouTube or at places like cichlid-forum before you buy fish. Now, the reason I gave that tip was because, uh, and if you notice the video that's playing while I'm going over those 10 tips, the video that's playing is showing a very mixed tank. I had different lakes. I had um, haps, peacocks, babunas. I had, um, you know, I had a, a beautiful frontosa in there that I ended up giving to uh, Kevin Green. I had, um, anyway, it was just a mixed bag, and uh, I didn't do research. I just would go to go to a store, and if the if the label on the tank said cichlid, I go, oh good, I've got a cichlid tank, and I'd buy the fish. So, uh, in hindsight, uh, <laughs> in hindsight, uh, uh, I would add uh, the word patience to uh, those 10 tips as a keyword because I was in such a hurry to get my tank set up that I ordered a bunch of fish, I bought a bunch of fish, and I threw them all in, and, uh, and, and then after the fish uh, moved along and grew, put on size, and became more assertive, and had temperament changes, and became more protective of territory, I started to get into a battle royale with my fish. And uh, believe it or not, uh, what was a very peaceful and beautiful um, yellow lab, an electric yellow mabuna, it turned out to become just this little monster, and uh, I ended up having to rehome rehome him along with a yellow-tailed mabuna and a, a you know a pseudotrophius. The pseudotrophius was just a jerk. Uh, this pseudotrophius was beautiful, but he would uh, it, during feeding time he would chase everybody so that only he could eat. And uh, anyway, so I ended up having to do a complete reset, which could have been avoided. If I had watched some YouTube videos, done some research, gone to the cichlid dash forum, uh, you know, got into some fish groups, uh, things like that, and, and did some research. So uh, I ended up researching after the fact, which is an expensive way to learn. I don't suggest that. So I think that I think that tip has held up uh, over the years uh, quite well. And uh, tip number ten uh, was. Don't obsess, use common sense, uh, pleasure and relaxation. Uh, the, the, you're doing it for pleasure and relaxation and for fun, not for, not for uh, stress and anxiety. And a lot of folks um, that I would communicate with 
would would uh, communicate to me in a in a sense of desperation. Uh, can you help me? My nitrates are at 25. Um, what do I do about this? Uh, th this fish isn't eating like he. There was a lot of stress and a lot of uh, tension in in these in these texts and messages I was getting. And what I realized was that a lot of folks out there were, um, you know, they were just getting over overstressed and not really enjoying the hobby, not really able just to sit back, uh, have a cup of coffee, and just watch their fish and have it do the medicinal, uh, <laughs> this was based on research, uh, watching your fish actually lowers your blood pressure, improves your immune response, uh, changes the waves in your brain. It, 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 there's actually something very therapeutic about fish keeping. But it's not gonna do that if you're obsessing over a uh, one part per million move in your nitrates it's not going to provide you with that benefit. So uh, don't obsess. And um, I also made a comment about ignoring uh, uh, asshats, ignoring trolls, ignoring jerks who, uh, when you ask a question, jump on you or uh, are very critical of your tank, of your fish, of you, of your setup. Uh, these folks are not assets in the in the hobby they're actually uh, detriments in the hobby they're not helping new fish keepers to learn and uh, and and to that degree they're killing off the hobby because they're shutting the door for new people who are going to ask what seems to a veteran a very stupid question and uh, which seems obvious to you because you've been doing it a while but remember you were that person at some point so um we have to keep we have to keep that empathy in there and so one of the bonus tips i gave was ignore the trolls ignore the jerks realize that that's how they view the world and they think that their spouse is ugly they don't like their dog they hate their kids and uh, that's the world they live in and uh, they can live in it uh, that's that's up to them for me it's block and hasta la vista so um so don't take comments seriously, but realize that if you do decide to become a YouTuber and you put stuff out there in the public domain, you are going to attract some trolls. Uh, that's what they do. That's what trolls do. Usually they are not able to create or put out anything themselves, and so they go after people that do. They're sort of a vampire. You know, they need blood. They need your blood uh, because to live. So uh, at any rate... Uh, don't uh, don't engage and uh, the last uh, tip I think I gave on that video which like most of my videos they say three tips or five tips or ten tips but they end up giving you 20 tips but the last tip on that video was to be sure to share uh, you know to share your knowledge uh, ask questions and share and, and share a lot and um, you know there, there's a there's a great country song where um, it, it, one of the lines in it is uh, be sure to to turn around and help the next one in line and this is how we build the hobby is to kind of reach down, reach and, and, and help the next person uh, so that they become a, 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 a good stable fish keeper and that comes about by us sharing on uh, you know at, at, at groups like uh, Ben O cichlid Ben O apostrophe cichlid on uh, on Facebook, a little shameless plug for the group that uh, I started on Facebook. Uh, but find forums that are safe and friendly and go there and, and ask away, get information. And also, as you become experienced, share the information. And, uh, and this is how we grow. So uh, those, were the, uh, those were the tips and, uh, that I gave back then. I think for the most part, um, the, for the most part, they were actually, they've actually held up over time. And, um, you know, I think they still, they still, they're still strong today, like they were back then for the most part with those little alterations that I've uh, mentioned along the way. So let's, let's, uh, let's very quickly move over to uh, my favorite part of live streaming. Uh, do you know what that is? My favorite part of live streaming is uh, getting
getting into your questions and chats. And again, a, a big shout out to those of you who have super chatted. I, I've, been, I've been talking and I don't know if I missed any of them. But for those of you who super chatted last week, uh, for some reason, YouTube didn't, didn't let me, didn't let me um, look at last week's comments during the live stream. For some reason, they disabled the, uh, the chats. It might be because, it might be because I did an edit to the video. I took off the front end where I adjusted the lights. Um, and, and so maybe because I did an edit to the video that disabled the chat because it couldn't sync up with the video. That's what I'm thinking. It would have been nice if YouTube had given me a warning that if you edit this your, your live stream that you will lose the chat. I wish that had been there, but it wasn't. But anyway, let's take a look at what some of the things that you folks have said here and uh, take up some of your questions. And uh, we've got a few minutes here left on the chat. Let's take a look at uh, what you've had to say here. And... Uh, I think we got well over a hundred uh, people on today. That is so awesome. I really appreciate you folks sharing this and uh, sharing these live streams with your friends and groups, groups that allow you to share uh, YouTubers. Uh, Bruno Lobo, good evening from Switzerland. Hello, Bruno, I hope you're keeping warm. And uh, someday I plan on visiting your wonderful country. Inventory King, hello, my friend. Uh, Paul has gotten in, has become a salty has uh, some salt water projects going. Check out his channel, The uh, Inventory King. Very nice stuff going on over there. And uh, Jamie St. Amand, I actually put a video up yesterday since my nephew was over for Christmas vacation. And it's of him in my fish tank checking everything out. He's so cute. Just had to do it. <laughs> That's awesome, Jamie. <laughs> I love that. I love the, uh, the, the look of wonder when kids walk up to a tank and are like, whoa. And uh, GP, I lost a Venusis yesterday. I'm sorry to hear that, GP. I hate it when that happens. And... Uh, You had no time to help him. It sounds like he might have gotten into a beating or a fight. Uh, it, it sounds like there was a, uh, a little bit of a battle. And uh, sometimes, you know, we go to work, we come back, and the, something happens when you're not there. I mean, even in the dark, I, I turn the lights off during the day uh, for two reasons. One, for algae control, of course. And two, uh, the second reason, because I, they're, they're a little bit calmer in the dark. But I have heard some some uh, crazy splashing in battles, even when the lights are out. And uh, so that's no guarantee that there's going to be peace in the tank. Uh, Tom Anding uh, saying hello from Malibu. Hello, Tom. I'm going to be going to the farm over at the Malibu Pier pretty soon. I love that place. And I love Malibu. And uh, OK, let's see. Duke City Aquarium's nice laptop. Yeah, you know, I, I, I did a little bit of uh, Googling, a little bit of uh, YouTube watching on it, and uh, my kids did good. They did good by me. Um, he was fine the day before, and then I noticed the white string poop. Oh, okay, so it wasn't a battle. It was, uh, it looks like you got some parasites. Well, well, if I know you, GP, you're probably treating that whole tank right now, because that's what you got to do when you get that. You got to treat the whole tank. When you see stringy poop and you suspect that you've got some parasites, don't bother, don't bother um, with uh, you know pu pulling out the fish and putting them in quarantine. Uh, you need to treat the whole tank because those parasites are you know probably everywhere. Uh, fish gobble up other fish's poop. I mean it's disgusting, but it happens, and uh, you can be pretty sure that you have a cross contamination. Just go ahead and bomb that whole tank with a good parasite. Uh, you know I would start with general cure, maybe go from there. Um, the budget aquarist, personally, I'm not a fan of memberships. To me, it says, th tanks, longtime fans, now pay up for the good stuff. Um, you know, that's a good point, and that has been uh, a consideration in my mind. Uh, am I going to be, um, you know, this one of the things that um, 
that I've I've done in my channel is I haven't um, it hasn't been really commercial necessarily. I don't consider myself one of the big. I mean, I've got some merchandise and and, uh, and 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 cups and stuff, and but it hasn't been a real commercial uh, venture for me. So um, we'll see. I mean, you, what you're saying is an honest consideration that's rolling around in my head too. So thank you for bringing that up. And. Uh, Uh, Sir Cropia 10, is it good to put ceramic noodles in bottom of canister for coarse filter media? Well, the ceramic noodles would be more, I think, of a biological, I guess, and uh, it would depend on the water flow. How's the water flowing? Is the water flowing down before it returns to your tank? And if so, then uh, sure, I would put them at the bottom with some uh, sponge uh, filters above it and maybe some pinky or some uh, polyfill, you know, some floss above it, you know, uh, but um, if it's flowing down, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd put it at the bottom of the canister, why not? Uh, it, it'll uh, be a, a home for some biological and it has some good flow through, you know, because of it uh, being a noodle. see here let's see if there's some other watch some videos on Fritz salt Steve Poland cichlid shack mr. Largo says that Steve Poland is coming back to Africans very good very good and if you know that I suspect he's ordered some from you <laughs> that's good very very good uh, Steve Poland, Steve Poland is, um, he's the one in my mind that, that really, really blew up the, um, and it blew up in a good way, uh, blew up the, the Ohio Fish Rescue Group when he did that first tour. I think he was the first one to do a walkthrough of Ohio Fish Rescue, and, um, and uh, it just went crazy viral, and, uh, you know, Big John and, and uh, the guys there are now stars on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, Mark says I should go to Ohio, to the Ohio Fish Rescue. I would love to go there. The problem is I would never leave. They'd have to like call the police. Let's see here. Denny's Aquatics likes primetime aquatics. I've got to check them out. Primetime. I've heard from several people. Primetime. Jamie likes KG Tropicals. IFG King of DIY. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Marks likes Jay Wilson and Prime Time. Yep. Jamie likes uh, Corey. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Corey down in uh, the Costa Mesa. Uh, meeting Corey is uh, legit. I mean, that guy. Um, he's like a like. A, I don't know. I'm a fish nerd. He's a super fish nerd. And I say that in the most uh, warm and caring way possible. The guy studies, he's certified, he, he knows, uh, you know, at a microscopic level what's going on with things. The guy's uh, 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 just, uh, uh, you know, he's like an encyclopedia on plants. Uh, the guy knows his stuff. Uh, I would put him up there with, you know, like a Rachel O'Leary. You know, she really knows her stuff. There's a lot of study that has gone on um, that uh, some of us simply just don't do. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. GP says the tank behind me is lightly stocked. Yeah, some people would, would say that. It's lightly stocked. Chevy Fish, aside from you, thank you, Chevy Fish. Uh, my top three are Rachel, Leary, Joey, and Corey. I, those are awesome choices. Mark's Fish, I have the Sun Sun 5000 FX6 C 530 Marine Land on a 125. Boy, you've got a lot of diversity going there and uh, a lot of backup. You know me, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I love the redundancy and the backup so that if one system fails, uh, you still have other systems running. Also, while, you, while you're servicing one, the other ones are running. And so you have that, that, uh, that backup going. That, I think that's a great, a, a great way to run. Let's see here. Uh, 
Aviator123, your channel is the best. Thank you, Aviator. Love that. Uh, I am disappointed that many now have moved away from cichlids. Right now, I really don't have a number two or three. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of YouTubers, um, you know, a lot of folks on YouTube are are trying to attract a wider audience, and so they've gotten into diversification. And, and you know, so they're they they've added you know some of my favorite YouTubers now are are uh, you know some of the ones I mentioned have now a variety of fish. Where when I first started watching them, they were exclusively uh, keeping African cichlids. So uh, at some point. I may add other types of tanks, but I think uh, uh, African cichlids will always be my first love. So, um, and besides that, I already have these these logos made up, so I have no choice. I'm going to have to keep. <laughs> I'm gonna, unless I change my logos and my uh, merchandise. Um, let's see here. So Jamie Saint Amon added three new cichlids. I guess one that she named Fireball got so mad he almost tipped over his huge center decorations. Yeah, they, they can get pretty, they're very territorial sometimes. It depends, I mean, if, and if they've got some sort of breeding idea going on, if you've got some females in there, uh, you can get into some uh, real interesting uh, uh, behavior. Chevy Fish rearranging tank decorations is a common practice in my cichlid club in order to restart the inhabitants' territories, and and that's um, that is a, a, a common technique. It's a common technique. The um, you know if you're getting a lot of aggression, a lot of a lot of fights, a lot of chasing, change everything around and and see what happens. See if that helps it. Um, I've had it calm calm down. If you have a true jerkfish, and uh, I put a video out one time called Jerkfish. If you if you have a true jerkfish. Uh, it, probably there isn't anything you can do short of pulling that fish out and 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 rehoming him, taking him to the local fish store, selling him on Craigslist, uh, putting him in a uh, because even timeouts. I mean, people talk about timeouts. Let's put him in a different tank, reintroduce him later. I haven't seen that work. I haven't seen that work. I have seen timeouts have been uh, uh, not effective. Uh, John, John, thank you so much. We have a, uh, a super chat from John. Thank you very much. Very appreciated. And let's see here. Knight Rider. Looks like I got him into Sun Suns, 304Bs. I like him. I like him. Ben, I'm in SoCal. Where are you located? Michael Hollins. I'm in Arcadia, California, Michael. Arcadia. So you're probably... Uh, California's a big state, but you're probably not too far. The, uh, Rob D., the only way I su succeeded in introducing a single fish was to put it in a clear drop box. At least the others got used to the sight of it. I've seen that. I've seen aquariums with uh, several plastic boxes in them. Uh, not something I'd consider very aesthetic, but necessary. And uh, But at some point, you're going to have to face the music. At some point, that box is going to have to open, and you're going to have to see how they you know, how they interact, how they socialize. And uh, anyway, if it's worked for you, you know, keep doing it. That's my advice to everybody. If you're doing something and it's working, keep doing it. Uh, GP says buying expensive media for canisters is kind of pointless. Uh, I'd love to hear what the rest of you watching think about that. Uh, do you think that expensive media is worth it? Or do you think that you get uh, a similar bang for the buck using your pot scrubbies, using uh, ceramic rings, using things that you can pick up uh, fairly inexpensively on, uh, on, on Amazon or someplace like eBay. Some people are saying it's all marketing hype. Bruno flooded the living room with the sun, sun, never again. I've heard those stories, but you know, Bruno, and honestly, I've heard stories about flooding with all pieces of equipment, uh, Eheims, uh, Fluvals, uh, you know, tank, tank seams breaking, uh, things uh, flooding, uh, I've, I've, some leaking. I mean, it happens. I'm sorry it happened to you. Knight Rider, loved your videos. You made maintenance look so easy and painless. Uh, you know, Knight Rider, I'm always looking for the uh, 
the most efficient but most effective way to do things. And if I come up with one, I immediately go and share it. It uh, doesn't mean that six months later I might not revert back or, 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 uh, or even, even, uh, even come up with a different way, but I'm always looking for easier, faster ways. Jamie St. Amon, try a car accident with neck and back injuries. Bucket patrol sucks. Way worse. My son hated it because he had to do it for me. Uh, there you go. I mean, I tell you, all it takes is a little, uh, a, a little sciatica, and uh, th that bucket br brigade is, uh, is no good. Let's see here. All right, well, anybody that I've missed here, and if I've missed any super chats, I will catch you on the next go around. I love water, Elflower, one stars. I love water changes. The fish just love it. They seem so happy. You know, um, it's funny, yeah, the, the fish, they, they seem, um, they, they get brighter. They, they display better color after a water change. They, they sometimes go into breeding behavior. Uh, which is always a good sign, right? If your fish are breeding, uh, it means that they're, uh, they obviously have a, a certain comfort level. Uh, even if it's in an all-male tank, you see them going through dances and stuff. It's, uh, it's a pretty interesting, but yeah, water changes. It really is like adding fresh air to a room that's been closed for a very, very long time. And uh, Francia Arroyo, oh my God, I just spit coffee in the... <laughs> Oh, God. Mike Addison, looking into Fluval FX6 for a planted 90-gallon uh, community tank with Phoenix lights. Thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, a Fluval FX6, I think, would do a great job on a 90. I'm running it on a 100 right now. It's keeping the tank uh, very, very clean. I have the uh, some power heads in there that are moving detritus uh, so that on a sand substrate so it's being sucked up by the intakes uh, very easily I do have a, a pre-filter on that as you know and so um, I think that'd be a good setup I think that a 90 would be a good setup um, let's see here Phoenix lights I mean are the, are the Phoenix lights you're looking into just make sure they're full spectrum uh, Phoenix makes uh, I think makes a decent decent lights I've got a uh, what I think is a Phoenix on the sump. I have a, a uh, with a bending neck. I, I, I found out about it uh, from Corey at the co-op. It's a, uh, I think it's called a Phoenix Barracuda, full spectrum. And uh, I bought it because I was gonna put some plants in the sump. Now I'm gonna be putting some, uh, some uh, pathos in the sump. And so that Phoenix, it's a full spectrum Phoenix. So uh, yeah, I think that that would be great for a planted tank. Uh, Jordan Curtis trolls are everywhere. Yeah, but you know what, Jordan? I think there's there's a there's a far less percentage of trolls than you think, and it and and from my experience, the vast majority of fish keepers are actually decent, good, kind people. Um, and and those of you on this on this stream today, the vast majority of you, 99.99 percent, are good, friendly. Uh, People that would be willing to help someone out if they said, I, I have a question. And, uh, but because the trolls get attention, they seem like there's a lot of them, but they're not. I don't think so. I think they're a very small, very small um, and, uh, and very uh, twisted percentage of the fish keeping community. And uh, like I said, they are not helping the community. They hurt the community. So um, let's see here. I think I've covered just about everything. All right, so I want to thank all of you for sitting in today. We're just over an hour. We're at 122, it looks like, watching. That is awesome. If you put the uh, live stream on a graph, the graph looks, you know, it, go, it goes up, 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 up with the number of people watching each week. And that's always, it's moving in the right direction. It's not drying up and blowing away. It's actually growing. And so I really appreciate that. Um, I want to um, thank all of you, especially those who are in far away and very strange time zones. 
getting up at two in the morning to watch this or at you know midnight or something. Uh, thank you so much to uh, those of you who have uh, supported the channel with Super Chats and uh, who've purchased mugs. I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate all of you for taking the time to spend an hour with me on Saturday when you could be doing so many other things. You come and spend some time with me and I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I thank you for that. A thank you to my moderators, the best moderators on YouTube, uh, you know, Kevin and, and, and Denny, and of course the amazing uh, Candy. Uh, you are very appreciated. And once I get my new software in place and I get that new laptop fired up, I'm going to be able to do split screens. And at some point, I hope to have uh, my moderators join in and perhaps even put a camera on their own mugs and uh, say a few words during some of, these, uh, some of these live streams. And also some of you, some of you out there, I would like to include some of you in these live streams, be able to answer questions, not just by reading them, but by have you actually say them on camera and then have me respond to you directly. I think that would be a lot of fun. So we'll see. We'll see how the channel develops. For those of you whose questions I did not pick up, I will, uh, I'm sure that after I wrote to YouTube, they're not going to disable the chats. I will be able to read them and catch them uh, next time around. So uh, that's all for me. I have a lot of tanks to work on and a few other things to get done today. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, you rock, my friends. You know that. Bye-bye.